Hi, I'm here with Wayne from Ellacraft, and Wayne, can you explain to the people your what you do for Ellacraft, and then we'll move on to what you've sure your new radio you've come out with. Yeah, I'm uh, Wayne Burdick and Six KR, and um, I'm the co-founder of Ellacraft and also the CTO. And most of the time, you know, I'm managing the engineering teams and uh, doing the occasional PR. Um, but I uh, some, sometimes I get a chance to go back and. Um, design something fun, and my uh, my most recent project is uh, the Ellacraft uh, KH1. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. So, this is the KH1 transceiver. It's a very small, five band, five watt CW transceiver that's uh, optimized for soda operation, and uh, just a little bit of a close up there. So. As you can see, it's a actually go ahead and do it again. It's a handheld radio, and maybe you can see a little bit of the display if I turn it on. Uh, maybe see the display a bit there. Um, I, I've also got some some B-roll I can roll in too, so we can see it too. Sure. So anyway, the the, the purpose of this little radio is, um, in my case, I do a Come lot of hiking. A um, I get I. There hike as, as often as I can, you know, just in the local parks or uh, out with my son. You're and a big outdoorsman, huh? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm into outdoors. I'm into nature, plants, and wildlife. And and but I've also been involved in uh, in amateur radio for you know decades. I think I was ripping radios apart starting at age seven, and then ever since then I've been trying to put them back together again in, a, <laughs> in an interesting. If they way. go back together, that's always a good thing. I, it doesn't. I can't say that always happens for me. <laughs> right. Um, so anyway, this is our new baby, and um, like I said, it's uh, it's targeted at, at soda operation, kind of an ultra light version, something that I'm actually calling diet soda. Yeah. Yeah. Just to keep the weight as, as low as possible, while still being able to have um, uh, an efficient, high performance HF station. So this radio covers 40, 30, 20, 17, and 15 meters. Okay. Um, it has a uh, built-in automatic antenna tuner. Um, you, guys, a, you guys could fit a tuner in that little radio? There is an automatic That's antenna awesome. tuner in here, and the, the antenna tuner works uh, with both the whip antenna and the BNC. Okay. So you can hook up your dipoles or your random wires thrown in a tree, which we often do, um, or you can use it with the whip. And the whip covers 20, 17, and 15 meters. And the nice thing is it's just the whip all by itself. The loading coil that you usually see on a whip is mm -hmm. actually buried inside. Oh, really? Along with the ATU, right? So any whip. You could more use or less you could work. use B and C whips with it also, oh, cool. but this one just screws into a uh, uh, to a metric M8 by seven post that you can okay. see right there, yeah. and it's nice and sturdy. And so the idea is, the idea is to get on the air quickly. Right. So um, our, uh, our 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 deployment time. From the time that it's in my back pocket to the time we're actually on the air is about 20 seconds. Wow, that's fast. Yeah. Um, the other thing we had to do was uh, figure out how to make a, a really small keyer paddle. Um, this little keyer paddle plugs in at the base of the radio. Flip it upside down, plug it in. And if you guys didn't see, it stores upside down so it's not sticking yeah. up. So in this condition, it's actually straight up so that it's out of the way of the knobs. But when you store it, it's between the knobs, so it's protected. And so we're, we're basically on the air right now. Um, and the other piece of interesting hardware we have here is the logbook tray. Um, kind of an unsolved problem. You know, like you see all kinds of interesting ways that <laughs> people right. do logging um, with soda contacts. But I wanted a way to, to have a stack of paper log sheets and be able to just peel one off and stick it on the back of the stack. So that's what this does. And of course, it has with a, uh, a ballpoint pen, the clips in. So it's, you know, when you add in the the battery, the charger, the antenna tuner, the paddle, the antenna, and the log sheet, it's really a complete package. It's, and, it's a whole station. And I, I know my my KX2, you said is like 150 on the the draw. Oh, and, milliamps. Milliamps. And yeah. what does this throw on KX2 this thing? KX2 is about 150 to 180 milliamps. This is about 50 to 70. So about so, a third. Right. And wow. but it's the same size battery. So you know, it uses the same batteries as a KX2. Same right? batteries as KX2, same so that's, internal that's charger. 
You can take the battery out if you want to and charge it with a fast charger. And this one does yeah. have an internal charger. It does. Well, right. to, to hook up a charger to it. Yeah, you plug just plug in your regular power supply and Perfect. it'll charge it. Or you can take the battery out and use our uh, fast charger, uh, okay. the KXBC2 fast charger. And then right. that'll charge it in about an hour. Okay. Right. So uh, it's probably too noisy out here to actually uh, actually get on the air very much. Um, but I'll, I'll tune up the automatic antenna tuner to show you what that now sounds this, like. Now this this does shortwave and stuff too, right? And you can listen to yeah. all SSB. It's not just it's CW only for you to for send transmit, for transmit. Right? But you can actually get on a sideband net, you know, like at right. 14300 or the HF pack net at uh, 18.157.5 right. or the noon time net, let's say on 40 right. meters. Um, so when you get onto a sideband net and you call them, um, the radio is going to send CW and they'll hear it at 700 hertz. And oh, okay. somebody on the net's going to know how to decode right. CW. Right, most, <laughs> most of those guys, somebody knows something right. how to do that. That's right. So I wouldn't, uh, but. So I'm just going to uh, peek up the, uh, the antenna tuner here. So just match the whip antenna on 20 meters to uh, 1.1 to 1. Uh, it's a good match. And um, Does that show up on the screen? Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, and Sorry, I can, guys, it's, we can't get all that in for you. but I can uh, go into tune mode and show you what it looks like on the screen here. So there's our 1.2 to 1. Okay. So one point, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's 1.2 to 1 Here. and uh, 1.2 to 1 and about uh, 4 watts out right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. 4 watts out. So it's a, it's it's basically a, a 5 watt radio? Yeah, it's nominally 5 watts. It'll actually put out a little more than 5 watts. Okay. Um, on and for terms. CW, that's all you need most of the time, right? I mean, yeah. You've, you've talked to me before about using your little smaller antennas and doing great because you do a lot of CW. Now, what do we have down here? So at the bottom end, we've got the keyer paddle. Uh -huh. We've got the uh, AF gain control and the VFO knob. Okay. I right. thought for earlier when I saw pictures, I thought this was maybe like the BNC, like the, you know, the BNC little things you buy to hook up uh, wires nope. to. All the antennas all goes up are on one end and all of the controls are on the other end, which <laughs> is really nice. the way you want to do it. Right, right. Because right. otherwise you... I've, I've messed with problems. amps that had like controls on both ends and it's like this is not good. I don't right. I didn't like it at all. But here, you know, you're not you're not never touching the stuff on top. I okay. mean conventional HTs work for sideband, they work for FM, right? right. This is a CW HT. Right? right. So you want the controls down here where your hand is. And then it's very easy to just move over here, grab the pin, log a contact, put it back in, you can change the log sheets this way. Um, and the the whole thing just packs down, um, stores really easily. So I can, oh, you can also use headphones with it. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna show you how you, pack, how you pack it down. So basically you just turn the power off, close the log tray over the front, and now all the controls are, are protected from moisture. And you get your E on the front there. there there's the Craft logo. And put down the whip. And that stores also, right? The whip actually- I don't know if you uh, guys saw that when he first put it apart, but it stores, it's so got the, its own little place to store it. So there's the, the whip clips right there. I'm just gonna clip this in. So it's all ready for, uh, for travel now. Um, <laughs> and cool. just for a little added security, usually I just go ahead and wind the uh, counterpoise wire yeah. around the radio. And plus that takes care of that, so it's not hanging and right. walking behind you and everything when you're walking. And if you got some excess wire length, we got these little grabbers on the uh, whip clips. To, just to dress the wire nicely go. so that's that it nice. stays out of the way. Right. And it holds it in place. Yeah. That's right. And then it goes back in your pocket until so, you get to the next place where so you, you want can, to take can rest. So you can take, say I have an infed half wave, I can hook that to it and it, yeah. anything or a dipole, anything will work with this, not just your antennas, like that's you right. said, because it just hooks to the BNC. Exactly. Right. Awesome. You, yep. You can does it do anything else that we, that we haven't talked about? So um, it does, uh, it decodes the CW as you send it. Oh, nice. Um, uh, which means, and, and there's a 32K EE prom in here to store up to 32,000 uh, outgoing CW oh, I'm characters. I'm glad you said that because I heard you say that inside, and yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about. It. So it'll, it'll, so every contact you make, it's storing it for you too. Everything you send with the keyer paddle 
it will store that in the 32K log memory. Okay, to send stuff. It doesn't, right. doesn't do the receive, but no. from that you'll know what, who you talk to. So Yeah, right. that's right. And every time, nice. so every time you change bands or change modes or start sending, it does a time and date stamp, so you can then take it to your computer later on, uh, hook it up with our piece of software, and then dump your log sheet into the computer. So nice. you can go back and see your QSOs, you can add them into your own log, etc. Oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And it has a real-time clock for uh, time and date Oh yeah, you said it had stamping. a clock, and then you said you can, on the, you can go to the uh, clocks online uh, on, on the frequency, and you can set your clock, to, or does it do it automatic? Well, so, no, it doesn't do automatic setting, but because it covers the SWL bands from mm -hmm. 6.7 all the way to 22 megs, you can receive WWV at 10, 15, and 20 megahertz. Okay. So chances are you'll be able to hear one of those, you can right. use that to set your clock if you needed to. Oh, yeah. If I you actually, didn't have a phone. I have a radio that I set the frequency to that, so it was calibrated. Can, we do that too. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So That's we awesome. So we can align it that way. So how many times have you used this? Have you actually got it out in the field? I know you've had it in the field. I've been using mine for months, actually. Have um, you? Uh, not this particular unit. This is a production radio. Okay. Um, but I used a prototype for months, and uh, some of our other field testers have been using them off and on for a long time. Nice. Uh, we got a lot of soda people involved. Um, and uh, in fact, one of our newest field testers is uh, Steve Galcha, WG0AT, the guy with the goat. Oh, goat. Oh, He's man. down to one goat right now. Oh, is he? I yeah. love watching that guy. And is poor, just, uh, I wish I could Peanut, do. I think, is the one that passed away. Oh, that's so, too bad. So he can't carry as much stuff anymore, and that's why he needs this. But, so, yeah. you know, I, I handed him uh, a KH1 last week in Santa Cruz, and he's been using it nonstop ever since. That guy will get it <laughs> tested out for you for sure. Yeah. He does a lot. Yeah. I guess he still does a lot. I haven't. I don't know if he still does the videos, but I haven't seen him lately. But every free moment, he takes the thing out of his pocket. And, and he's in Colorado, contact. right? Yeah, it's his home. So he's got station. lots of yeah. peaks and stuff to go. Right. I want to do Pikes Peak someday. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Except I, I went there one time, and it's like, wow, I'm a little dizzy up here. <laughs> Another one of our field testers is Fred, KT5X, who lives in New Mexico. OK. Um, very big uh, uh, field, uh, soda guy. And he also um, gave me a lot of input about things like this log book tray you know so okay so you're taking log. it's like a lot of the big companies you can't you can't really have they don't look at your ideas but you guys are a, a smaller company that you take input because you are the company you, oh yeah you, we, you and we, your we company, always your gather guys. input from our customers and you have a lot of people that you know that do this type of stuff and i think didn't thomas weatherspoon does he did thomas he weatherspoon's one? one of our field testers and that guy yeah you know he does nothing oh he's but, tom's amazing yeah, yeah he does really good stuff he's, he's got a great blog posting already on the uh, on the cage i think that's how it leaked out that was one of the ways yes the other way is that somebody found our ftp server and they snagged the brochure and the owner's manual and had those uploaded and published. you don't have to worry about me i don't know how to do that kind of stuff <laughs> I don't know. Ask the did. guys. <laughs> it kind of forced my hand. I had to announce a little bit earlier than I wanted to. But but you uh, guys kept this yeah. pretty. Like I was telling you, I was about ready to contact you anyhow to see if anything was going on and you needed to talk about anything. And guess what, guys? He will be talking to you guys about it again. We're, we'll go more into depth uh, on Coffee and Ham Radios. And yeah. You guys will be able to ask more questions. I'm just doing this off the cuff. So is he. So you guys get your questions ready. And. Uh, Wayne will be there to answer them for you. I don't know the date yet, but we'll get that out for you guys. So is there anything else? What's What comes with the base radio? Uh, so the base radio is uh, five bands, five watts. It'll have the real-time clock, um, the logging feature, um, and of course, uh, you know, it has all of the transmit monitoring. It'll, it'll monitor power, SWR, voltage, current, and temperature. So, you know, the radio is very safe. It all does all of its own self-monitoring. Okay. It has... Um, so it's got its own little computer inside, too. Yeah, it does. And it has three crystal filter bandwidths. So um, in tune, it's tunable uh, crystal filter bandwidths. It has uh, two different attenuator settings so, you know, for super high signal uh, environments. So it's a very capable little basic radio. And unlike the, the KX2 and the KX... I don't know about the KX3, but I know the KX2 is an SDR radio. This is not an SDR radio, though. The KX2 and the KX3 are SDRs. Right. This is actually a super hit. A super hit. And we did that for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, a super hit can be made super low current drain. Um, so there's no need for digital signal processing in this. Although right. I, I do some digital signal processing because there's actually a little mini pan feature in this thing, a little spec, miniature spectrum, oh, yeah. spectrum I, sweep. I wish I could get that on film, but probably and, not. And it'll, uh, yeah, not quite. Um, and it will, it'll decode CW 
and nobody knows this, but it actually decodes RTTY also. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but it doesn't really need DSP, and that way we can keep the current drain low, we can keep the RF noise low on si in, inside. Okay. And on you said it had boards. multiple uh, filters and stuff that you can change Yeah, too. it has three filter settings and on stock. sideband and three on CW. Okay. Um, and if you, like I said, if you're in CW, or if you're in sideband mode, you're still transmitting in CW. Okay. But you can set your filter bandwidth for good voice quality. Got you. Yeah. And, and then the upgrades are tuner? I would the auto tuner. The auto tuner. And the auto tuner comes with the whip and it's matching coil. Okay. All right. So okay. we bundle those together because you really need the, the tuner with the whip and it, yeah. whenever you're using a short antenna. And if you guys know anything about Elecraft tuners, they tune. <laughs> this, <laughs> Any, may be, this may be the world's smallest auto tuner that we have inside and I, the cage. And I will room. someplace in the video insert a picture of it. It's really hard to see, but I do have a little picture of it. It sets at the, I think the very top of the radio and it yeah, right slides there in, the, yep. slides in from the back forward. Right. So I'll try to put that in here, probably near this, what we're talking about now. And the other options are uh, the keyer paddle, mm -hmm. um, the logbook tray, and the battery charger and battery. So okay, that's so the battery is extra too. Then. Yeah, um, some people will use their own batteries. We'll have right. people who are going to use like, you know, tiny little poly lithium polymer batteries to keep their weight down. Oh, like for little. But the charger only works with our battery. With your battery. Yeah, you don't want to use the charger with I've, any. I've got battery. that battery in my kicks too. And that thing, even on sideband, that thing lasts. It, it leaves, I get 10 watts for at least 45 minutes or better. Well, that would be like 45 minutes talking continuously, right? Yeah. I mean, well, um, I mean, calling CQ and stuff like that on yeah, a right. or something. So it's, it, it lasts quite a while. So but you, this thing should really last. Oh, yeah. No, you, this battery is probably good for, you know, for the average uh, soda op, probably 6 to 12, you know, like opera or activations. Oh, not, oh yeah, wow. At least. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't trust mine for that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I usually charge it between, between yeah. them, though. Anything else you want to add that, um, that we have, that we may have missed or? Well, just, just that the thing is ultra light. You know, it's, um, it's half the size of a KX2. It's yeah. half the weight of a KX2. And it's half the Which price is, of a KX2. And the KX2 <laughs> is probably the best, I would say, the best if you're a soda guy and you're actually actually packing out places, there's probably no better radio because of the size, the weight, everything. I know you guys have the KX3, but it's bigger. Now, why is it white? Yeah, well, um, so the- Most radios are black, so why is this one white? Yeah, when it's in operation and it's wide open like this, um, the the metal case is all used for heat sinking the output nice. devices, right? Um, and so, uh, if it's if the case is white, it's going to do a much better job of reflecting the you know the white yeah. sunlight. So yeah. you guys have all taken your almost all radios are black. They sit in the sun, yeah, right. they get hot, right. and you're not even using it, and they're hot, right? right. So, so this should take this care one, of some of know, that. This this one is a it's a new it's a new color scheme. Um, we printed the labels on the front panel a different way. They're not silk screened. They're actually direct to substrate printed. Oh, nice. Yeah, using inkjet right onto the sheet metal. Oh, good. Yeah. So, uh, so it's, yeah. it's evolved also. I mean, absolutely. Every every time you guys come, and this is six colors. You guys six colors. Yeah. Oh, on front the front panel. Oh, on the front six panel. colors. Okay. Right. So, you had an X1 or a KX1. KX1. So 20, this, 20, 22 years ago. Yeah. So is this <laughs> this is like replacing that is that is that well the, is that that one's not made anymore right no we haven't made a kx1 yeah, okay. for many years or a k1 right um, but uh you know we've had many people over the years ask us to bring back the small cw rigs yeah so you know in, in terms of you know like two thousand and two dollars when we were still shipping the kx1 and the k1 this is like less expensive than those radios but it covers five bands and Five it's probably watts. way better. I mean, it has lots more features. Yeah. Right. So, so it's it's all of our technology. Sometimes things has don't evolved. go on, down in price, but you get more features. Yeah. Well, I know you guys do it right. I mean, you guys, I know with with your regular radios, it's like a cult following. I mean, I hate to say that, but it's it is people people that buy Elecrass love Elecrass. So, so uh, the, the secret there is like, Eric and I just design the stuff that we want. Right, and, and we just hope that everybody else wants the yeah. same thing. <laughs> well, you, but but you also know a lot of people that do this, so you kind of know that it's, it's there's a, a lot want, of there's a want for this out there already. Yeah. Right. All right, well, guys, thanks for joining me today, and uh, thanks for joining uh, Wayne here. And uh, hey, check it out if you guys are in or something like this. You might want to check out Alex Craft's site. I think they're you're taking orders right now, right? Yeah, and uh, but yeah. they're pretty close to production, right? We're we're technically in production. Okay. We'll, be, we'll be shipping some out next week, and then uh, we'll just keep right on going. If you ordered one right now, you're probably looking at January. 
Okay. You know, so that's yeah. not bad. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining. And thank you, Chuck. It's been Dana, fun. I appreciate you doing this with me, man. Okay.